Welcome to your yoga practice. We are going to do a combo of on our mat and in a chair today. So I am pulling my chair back towards my mat. And I'm going to keep my keyboard nearby in case anybody comes a little bit late so that I can admit them. And let's go ahead, either sitting in the seat or standing today. Typically, we we start kind of on the ground, um, you know, in that tall seat, centering ourselves. But sometimes it's nice to just work off a little energy, a little shake off the previous day, the previous week. So from your chair, sitting in a tall seat with your feet on the ground in front of you, your knees underneath your, um, or your feet underneath your knees. Go ahead and just gently feel the ground under your feet. Same thing if you're standing, open up your arms, lift your heart as much as feels nice. And this is... This is mountain pose here. In the Sanskrit, it is Tadasana. And this is where we are centered. So we kind of want to come a little forward, come a little back, maybe sway a little from side to side and find that center for yourself. And just feel your feet on the ground. So this is our mountain pose right at the beginning of our class. Let's get a little movement and check back in with it, okay? So let's just begin by shaking out the hands. And you might move to shaking out the forearms. You could take your feet out a little bit wider and kind of start bending into your knees a little bit. Just shaking off the prior week, shaking off anything that happened today, conversations shaking off to-do lists, just letting it all go and invite yourself to be right here in this present moment. And if you're sitting in a chair, you can also be shaking the arms and you could even, standing or sitting, lift one leg and then the other and just kind of shake it out. And you could kind of shimmy your shoulders and let your arms just sort of hang like wet noodles. Anything that feels organic and natural to you. And then we'll come to kind of take the feet out wide, whether you're seated or in a standing position. And we'll just begin to kind of sway the arms a little. Just give them a little swing. And you might stay here or you might start to swing the arms a little bit more. If you're seated, and feel free to move as much as your chair setup allows. If you got arms on the chair or whatever, those might get in the way. So maybe you want to scoot out towards the front of the chair. If you're standing, you might begin to kind of twist a little bit from side to side, sort of picking up one heel and then picking up the opposite heel and just feel your feet touching the ground. Feel the sensations of your arms. You might even begin to close your eyes if your balance is okay and imagine yourself standing in a beautiful meadow outside in the sun. Easy to imagine today because we do have the sunshine and it's a wonderful meadow where you don't have to worry about any bees or pollen because we're inside the house. And maybe you just tap yourself on the hip or on the shoulder and just think about being at play and at ease, just like a little kid. And then we'll begin to kind of slow the movement down. And as you're ready, draw your feet back to parallel, your knees back to parallel. Let the shaking of the arms subside and come back to your mountain pose. Feel your feet on the ground. Find your center. Roll your shoulders up and back and down. Let your heart lift. You might rotate your arms outward so that the palms are open and facing forward. 
and then draw the base of your skull up towards the sky. Release your tongue from your mouth, relax your jaw. And just notice any difference in this mountain pose as compared to your first one. You might notice some tingling in places or some energy, maybe a little increased heart rate or a little warmer. Just notice what you notice. And then we're going to inhale, reach our arms out as much as feels comfortable for you. Reach your arms up overhead. Maybe you have a bend in the elbow. Maybe the arms are straight. And we're just going to bring the hands together and down in front of our hearts. And then we'll do that again two more times. Inhale, raise the arms up. Again, take care of your shoulders, your pecs, your back body moving as much as feels comfortable and nourishing today. Use your inhale, use the whole breath, breath to raise your hands up towards the sky. And then palms together, exhale, bring your hands right down to your heart. If you like, you can bow your chin downtown, down towards your heart. Just giving yourself some gratitude for showing up today to get some healthy movement to nourish your nervous system and your immune system, yes, and to care for yourself, to make yourself a priority. You are worth taking care of. And then let's go ahead and take those arms out and up towards the sides once again. And I'm going to turn to face the front of my mat because we're going to bring those palms together, bend the knees generously, and come all the way down. Here we're going to hang in a rag doll. So if you're seated, you just take a forward fold here. And we'll Cradle the elbows in the palms here so that you're kind of framing your face. Take a nice big inhale here. And when you exhale, release the weight of your head like a heavy weight. And let it create a little traction for your spine. Couple breaths right there. And then very gently, we'll release the hands and slowly, 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 one vertebra at a time, rise back up to your mountain pose. And say hello to each and every vertebra along the way. Let your head be heavy the whole entire way. Unfurling from the ground like a brand new flower in springtime. Inhale, reach your arms up and out as much as feels good. Maybe you take a gentle back bend, opening up across the heart, looking up towards the sky. Bring those palms together as you exhale and we'll bend the knees generously once again and come all the way down into our forward fold, Uttanasana pose. Let's cradle those elbows once again, or maybe you're holding your legs here if that creates too much tension in the shoulders. Either way, if you're framing your face though, we'll switch it up so your opposite forearm is in front, likely your non-dominant arm. We're just finding a little balance and a few more breaths right here. You could bend and straighten your legs as much as feels good, stretching out the back of the hamstrings. Again, let your head be nice and heavy here. One more full cycle of breath here. Release your exhale. And then we're going to inhale, bring the heels of the hands to the tops of the thighs and find a halfway lift. Couple breaths right here. We're going to press into the top of the thighs gently. 
From a seat, you can be hinged forward as much as feels good to you. And we'll just draw the crown of the head away from the tailbone, draw the shoulders down towards the tailbone, draw the elbows in towards the spine. One more inhale here as you draw the heart forward, keeping your chin tucked to keep your spine nice and long. And then we'll exhale, bend the knees, plant your hands, and come all the way down to your mat. If you're in a chair, we'll come back to that nice tall seat. Or you could reach forward to another chair or to a table or desk that's out in front of you. So we're just going to kind of start right here doing cat and cows. So when you inhale, we're going to drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the tailbone. And then we'll exhale, round the spine, chin to chest. Just getting some nice, gentle, fluid movement in the spine. Moving really slowly and mindfully, you might imagine each and every vertebra as the spine in the spine as you move. And then we're going to tuck those toes under and send the hips back towards the heels. Stretch the palms out. If you're into it in a chair, come up onto the balls of your feet and press down towards the floor. You can stay right here if that feels good for you, just stretching out the bottoms of the feet and the side body. Or if it feels nice, you might walk your hands a little bit and get more of a stretch in the bottoms of the feet. If you've got little funky toes like I do, you might reach back and make sure they're all tucked under. And you can walk the hands up onto the thighs here. Find your tall spine. This can be very intense, but we have a lot of connective tissue and it all runs underneath the feet. So we'll just stretch out the bottoms of those feet. And when you've had enough of any part of that you wanted, we'll untuck the toes and just tap them out a little bit. And then we'll swing the legs out to the right or the left or cross the ankles and roll over to a seat. We'll sit up nice and tall here, coming into boat pose, Tadasana, or uh, Navasana in the Sanskrit. And we just want to hold on to the shins, have the knees bent and pointed up, the feet are parallel or maybe even touching here. And we'll find that nice tall Tadasana spine. Shoulders roll down the back, chin tucks, space of the skull upward, lift of the heart here and a gentle engagement of the belly. So you might take an inhale right here. And as you exhale, exhale through the mouth as if you're trying to fog a mirror. And notice how that feels in your belly. You could also get that sensation if you give a gentle cough. And you notice that engagement right here in the belly. So let's do that again. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. And then come back to inhaling and exhaling through the nose, but keep that engagement on the exhale. It'll be a little more subtle and a little harder to find. So you really have to pay attention. We're strengthening the core here. You might even feel a little engagement around the upper thighs, the hips, the low back. That's all our core. You might want to stay right here, nice and tall and still in your Tadasana back with that gentle engagement. Or you could start doing cat and cow here too. So we can hold on to the shins, inhale, lift the heart, maybe open the gaze up towards the sky. And then we'll exhale, round the spine, bring the belly button back towards the spine and the chin in towards the chest. Inhale, heart lifts, 
back arches, maybe a gentle back bend, shoulders back and down. Exhale, round the spine, chin to chest. And keep moving with your breath at your own pace. And as you come into that cow posture, you might imagine your shoulder blades as elevator doors that are closing behind your heart. And as you round back into your cat pose, you could imagine those elevator doors opening again. This might be great for you to stay with, or if you want to have a little bit more core engagement, you could release your hands from the shins as you inhale and round back a little closer to the earth with the arms still extended as you exhale. So lots of variations here, depending on what is your intention for your practice today, whether that is to find flexibility and get a good stretch or maybe build a little bit more strength you get to decide what your adventure is and then we'll come all the way back to sitting wrap your arms around your shins tuck your chin let your back round a little bit and your head be heavy once again and we'll just stretch out the back body and let the core engagement rest a bit here. And then we'll come to sit in Dandasana pose, staff pose. So you might want to center yourself on your mat. Again, in your chair, we're going to find that nice tall spine. And if it's okay, you could extend your legs out in front of you. Let's find that nice tall spine here and then bend the right knee and bring the sole of the right foot to the inside of the right thigh. If you're in a chair, have the left leg extended and keep the right knee bent. We'll find that tall spine right here. And then as you inhale, think of lifting the ribs up from the pelvis and hinge forward at the hips, kind of hinging over that left leg. Keep your spine long, that nice Tadasana spine. And you can bring your fingertips down to the floor. Or if you have a little more space, you could bring them to your shin or your ankle or even your foot. Again, honor your body, honor your boundaries, and keep your attention focused on your breath and your experience that you're having today. If you notice your mind start to wander off, thinking about past things or planning ahead for future things, bring your attention back to your breath. and the sensations that you're feeling in your body right now. And then we'll plant that right hand wherever it makes sense to you. It might be on the hip, it might be on the mat. And then we'll take those left fingertips over to the left side of the mat. And I'll, I'll turn toward you so you can see better here. And just have a gentle twist over to the left. If you're in a chair, your left hand might be resting on your left thigh. Breathe into that low belly and notice what expands in your hips and your low back. Couple breaths right there. And then we'll inhale, come back over that left leg and walk your hands back towards you so you have that tall spine again. And then we'll take a little counter twist. Just swim your arms, your fingertips over to the right and take a look up, out to the right or maybe even back over your right shoulder. On your next inhale, take your gaze out towards the left shoulder. And on your next exhale, bring your gaze back towards the right shoulder. 
And keep moving like that with your breath. Linking up the movement. With the breath, keeping your nice, tall Tadasana spine. One more time, we'll look back to the right, and then we'll come all the way back to center, extend that right leg, and maybe shake the feet out from side to side. Or if you're sitting in a chair, you might have the knees bent and windshield wiper them side to side. And then we'll do the other side. So bring the left foot in towards the right leg and the sole of the foot might be on the calf or up above on the thigh, but just make sure you're not putting any pressure on your knee. And again, chair people extend the right leg and keep the left leg bent. We'll find that nice tall spine once again. Inhale here, exhale, hinge forward over that right leg. Keep your right foot flexed. The toes can point up towards the sky and just start stop at that first place of sensation. We never want to feel any pain or push or pull or torque anything in yoga. We want to honor the body and listen to its guidance. One more inhale here. Maybe you use your exhale to come a little bit closer to that right leg. And then we'll plant those right fingertips on the floor beside the outside of the right thigh or on the thigh or hip and find a gentle twist looking out and beyond the left side, or excuse me, right side. Keep your spine long and your chin tucked. Use the leverage of your hands to give yourself a little bit more control here. You control your experience on your mat or in your chair. In your yoga practice, you control your experience. Use your next inhale to come out and unwind, and then we'll twist over towards the left to get a little counter twist. Tuck that chin, lift the heart. Nice and tall here. And then we'll come back to the front of the mat once again. This time, let's extend both legs out in front of us. Find that tall spine once again. Your fingertips can be out alongside the hips. Find your Tadasana back. And from here, you might want to hinge forward at the hips um, with the arms down, or you could inhale, lift the arms back up towards the sky, hinge forward at the hips, and come a little bit closer to your thighs, any amount. And the arms might be out down low, or they might be up high, wherever makes sense for your shoulders. And when you're ready, let them come down to rest on your mat or on your legs, wherever it makes sense. And here, we'll just draw the heart forward, tuck the chin, get long once again through the spine, flex into the feet. And then exhale, soften the feet, turn the palms up towards the sky, and let the head round down towards the body. Chin comes in towards the chest. Just let your back body round and open once again. Breathing here. Letting this be a restorative posture to open the back body. And then just think about the fact that it's, we're kind of transitioning here as you soften and continue to breathe. It takes at least a couple of minutes to begin to soften the myofascial uh, system beneath the skin, above the muscle. 
So you're going to give that a couple of minutes and just think about how we're transitioning right now from winter to spring. And we've been, it's been dark and cold and winter time. And if you're here with your eyes closed, I'm sure you can easily imagine the feeling and the experience of that season. An indwelling and a quietude. But we're getting ready to transition into spring. And you might just think about planting those seeds in your garden. Now I'm talking physically, sure, hopefully you do get to have a garden, but also metaphorically, emotionally, what you're doing for yourself. What seeds are you planting? What seeds are getting the sunlight? What seeds are getting the water and the nourishment? You might just Think about that as you begin to roll your back up one vertebra at a time. Once again, just like one of those seeds that you're planting, growing up and out of the ground and standing tall in the sunshine. And let's bring the hands together at the heart once again. Just acknowledging what seeds are you planting or maybe just giving that a little gentle thought. And then let's come on down to our backs. If you're sitting in a chair, hopefully you can make yourself down to your back body. Um, actually, that would be awesome for a chair person. If you are on your mat and you have a chair nearby or a wall nearby, you might grab it. So if you are laying on your mat, you don't have a wall or chair nearby, we're just going to come down to the back and extend the legs up towards the sky. Just going to let the, uh, the blood and the lymphatic fluid that's kind of pooled up down in our feet, give it a chance to come back down towards the heart and the abdomen where it can all be processed and redistributed around the body. If you have a wall, you could come to put your legs up on the wall. If you have a chair, you could put your legs up on the chair. So lots of different options. Everybody's got a different setup at their house. So hopefully you found something that can work for you here. And from here, let's open up the hands up to the sky and kind of press into your triceps in the back of your skull so you can lift your heart up and tuck your shoulder blades in towards one another. And then we'll lift the head up so we can tuck the chin. That way our neck is a nice long extension of the spine. If it feels nice and you have the space, you might take your arms out into a T shape, or you could come to a W shape, or maybe to a cactus arm straight uh, shape with a 90 degree angle. Wherever you are, we just want to have that gentle lift in the heart and a gentle softening across the shoulders. Imagine you could draw the collarbones away from one another. Just let your arms be really heavy here and invite your belly to be soft. And notice your breath. Notice where you feel it the first place. Maybe you feel it as your belly rises and falls. Maybe you feel it in your chest or in your nostrils, wherever you notice it. Just notice it without judging it, without changing it, without needing it to be any different. Accepting what is right here in the present moment.
And then if it feels good to you, you could encourage your breath to come a little bit deeper. If it's not already in the belly, you could inhale and notice the breath coming in through your nostrils. Imagine its pathway down through the throat into the lungs, the lungs expanding, the diaphragm pressing down towards the internal organs, expanding the belly. And then as you exhale, just visualize the reverse of that path, the belly softening as the diaphragm moves upward, pressing the air out from the lungs, back up through the chest and the throat and out through the nose. Just watching the flow of your breath with your mind's eye. And again, if you notice any thoughts, just notice them gently and invite your attention back to your breath and the experiences that you're feeling in your body right now. It's our tendency in our Western culture to want to rush from one thing to the next, to keep ourselves busy, to produce, to be of value. But know that you are doing a very valuable thing right now, being still. Recruiting your nervous system to calm down your immune system to lessen the release of cortisol and adrenaline and release the release and increase the release of melatonin and serotonin and all of those wonderful healing hormones. It also improves our sleep and our digestion and our ability to heal when our nervous system is in this state, this parasympathetic state. Let's just stay here for one more, uh, let's just a few more cycles of breath, not very long, but still very powerful. And as you're ready, go ahead and start to hug your knees down towards your heart. If your legs are up on a wall, you'll draw them in and roll to one side or the other. If you're actually, no matter if you're on a wall or a chair or just on your mat, we'll hug those knees in and rock gently from side to side. That was that was nice. That works for all variations here, just to rock and hug the knees, massage the low back gently. And as you're ready, we'll roll to one side or the other and press up to a tall seat. Whatever that looks like for you. I like to come into staff pose, Dandasana, with the feet out in front of us, toes pointing at the sky. You'll be sitting back in your chair if you're using a chair, sort of finding a Tadasana spine here. And let's just bring those fingers out to either side one more time. Tuck that chin, lift the heart. Use your next inhale to bring your hands to your heart or to swing those arms out and up and overhead and take one more opportunity for a gentle back bend and then bringing them down to meet your heart with your exhale. Let's, if it feels nice, you can bow your chin towards your chest one more time in gratitude for your body and the intelligence that it has to help you to begin to heal or anywhere you are along your healing process, your healing journey. 
being a friend to you and helping you along the way. And maybe bowing down again to whatever fun seeds or gentle seeds or caring seeds you might be planting and nourishing this week. May you have peace in your thoughts, peace in your words, and peace in your hearts. Namaste.